Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everybody, today I am going to discuss, I am Professor Vikas Mehdi, I am going to discuss about anti-epileptic drugs. Now before that, let me uh, tell you that uh, this epilepsy disorders is so common, not only in developed countries, also in developing countries. But prior to this, I would like to say that there are so many terminologies used in anti-epileptic drugs, like people say seizure, convulsion non-convulsive seizure, epilepsy or epilepsy syndrome. So, you need to understand that when you call it seizure like transient occurrence of clinical symptoms due to abnormal neural behavior and you also call convulsion that is seizure typically you present prominent body movement, but minimally also there is no movement you call it non-convulsive seizures or you call it absent seizures and typically epilepsy it is a brain disorders with an enduring predisposition to genetic epileptic seizures and otherwise you also call epileptic syndrome. Now, let me look at uh, the uh, you know etiological disease like once we said it, it is very very common not in developed countries also in developing countries and also if you see WHO report 80 percent of this epilepsy are from developing nations and it is all common in all days ages. Now, if you see that in younger children they are more vulnerable, but at the age progresses more than 60 years, they are more prone to have seizures because of seizure threshold. Now, look at this that we call is identify seizure is generalized or we make it a partial seizures. Now, if you look at the generalized seizures, we have absent seizures, myoclonic seizures, tonic clonic which is primary and also tonic clonic and atonic. Similarly, in partial seizure, we have a simple partial, complex partial, secondary generalized. So, these are different type and depending on that we have to select the drug therapy. Now, if you see that another form we have that emergency setup that we have a status epileptic So, we can define that if a person develop two and more seizure without recovery of conscience between so, you make it a status epileptic and this single seizure it is lasted for almost 20 to 30 minutes. So, if you make it a type is generalized convulsive, non-convulsive or simple partial one. Look at the etiology, if you look at that you know uh, looking at the partial seizure. So, during the birth if there is a history of hypoxia because of obstructive labors or there is a uh, you know history of the trauma, hemorrhages or there is a traumatic brain injuries or sometimes it is unknown cryptogenics also following the inspection of CNS infection, following a tumor or any growth is there and also may be genetical one which is linked to epilepsy like vascular malformation, cortical displacement. There are so many reasons, but sometimes you have that you do not know the etiology. It is an unknown reason that epilepsy they develop. Now, before you make that decide to go for a drug therapy, pharmacological therapy. So, you take a detailed history of the seizure. As you know that some of the condition we know that these are the reason that the person is having a seizure. Like we take a detailed history and also nowadays mobile phone is available. They can take the record of the seizure also, so that a clinician can evaluate that what kind of seizure it is and it become you know a uh, little uh, uh, you know easier to get, uh, start with the drug therapy. Of course, we have lot of investigations including the clinical examinations, neurological examinations. We go for the EEG uh, by stimulating the phonotic one or hyperventilation. So, they are easy to be evaluated. Then we have different imaging technique where we do in order to evaluate that all these etiological pathological factors or special studies like PET scan or video recording of EEG. So, once you evaluate the seizure type of seizure, you can decide the drug therapy or pharmacological therapy for the patient. Now, looking at the goal of treatment of epilepsy, as you know that we have a problem patient is having a recurrent seizure. 
The question here is how to control the seizure. And at the same time, since it is a chronic therapy, you have to give the drug for a many days or months together. So here the problem is when you start the therapy, so every possible pharmacological treatment has an adverse effect. So how to minimize the adverse effect? And also the compliance factor is very, very important. So we have to be educate the patient that patient need to take the medicine daily as long as it is required or as the clinician advice. Now, if you look at that, you know, scenario of anti seizure drug, we have different classification, like we can say carboxymide, and these are the drugs are enzyme inducers. So, there is chances of concomitant drug drug interaction, there could be drug fruit interaction or with a dietary supplement. So, in carboxymide, we have an older anti epileptic which is very commonly used is carbamazepine or we have a oxocarbapine. Then we have a group of hydrotin drug where most older anti-epileptic use phenytoin. This is also enzyme inducer. So whenever you have a concomitant medication, you have to be careful. And these are the drugs which talk about narrow therapeutic index drug. So it only affects within certain range. I will talk about detail with individual drug. Then we have a category of barbiturate. These are also enzyme inducers. Succimide, benzodiazepine, which is used in status epileptics like you know, we use for digipam. And there are a group of drug which actually enhance the GABA. And when you enhance the GABA, it has an inhibition. So, you can control the seizure. And there is also class of heterogenic anticonvulsant like lomotriazines. So, this is also other than epilepsy, also other condition like neuropathic pain, it has been used. So, we have so many medicine available, but that need be select that most appropriate one looking at that what kind of seizure we have and etiopathology. Now, if you look at this drug, how it is actually acting, this anti-epileptic drug. Now, most of the drug if you see that it is acting through the GABA synaptic transmission. Now, if you give any of the drug like barbiturate, benzodiazepine, GABA pentin, so these are the drug when it bind to the GABA, then there is a more chloride channels, it is entered into the cell. It causes hyperpolarization, so it causes inhibition. And that is how it acts as an anti seizure activity. Now, we can have also sim uh, similar drug like reducing the cell membrane probability through the voltage gated sodium channels. So, normally it is a stimulant action. If you block that, then definitely you will have a control of the seizure. Similarly, for calcium channel also. So, there are several mechanisms in acting through GABA, then acting through the sodium channels, calcium channels, and also inhibit the excitatory neurotransmitter like glutamate. Like we have an example of lomotriazine. It is acting through that it inhibit the release of glutamate. So, it acts as an anti-epileptic one. Now, look at the strategy. Like we have so many drugs that it actually modified ion channel conductance. And we have many drugs it inhibit the GABA. Like it enhances the GABA property. So, it has an inhibition. And at the same time, if you can control the excitation or aspartate and glutamate, it is actually we can control the seizure. So, these are the following strategy we work in clinical setup. Now, look at based on this strategy, you can see that you know that number of drug it is inhibiting the sodium channels. Like we have example of carbamazepine, we have example of lumetriazine, oxacarbazepine, phenytoin. So, there are so many including pulpate. So, this is acting through the sodium channel. At the same time, there are a number of medicine we have anti epileptic drug, it enhances the GABA, like barbiturate we have, benzodiazepine, GABA pentin. So, there are so many drugs, it is acting through GABA, so it causes inhibition. Similarly, we have inhibit the calcium channels, like we use the drug etosuximide for absent seizures. Then we have a pregabalin. So, these are that these are the mechanism that if it is the drug is acting through the sodium channel by inhibiting or enhancing GABA or calcium, then definitely you can use as an anti-epileptic drug. Now, looking at the different type of seizure as I discussed, like we say that we have a patient with grand mal epilepsy, though choice of the drug will be start with valproic acid or lumetriazine. Of course, we now think of all, you know individualized therapy, some medicines, some anti-epileptic are suitable for some persons. So, if they are not suitable, then we can have an alternative one like carbamazepine, topidamide or you can start a 
phenytoin. Obviously, we prefer to use an older anti-epileptic drug first. Similarly, if the patient is diagnosed with petit mal, the first choice comes is etosuximide or valproate or you can have an alt alternative one, clobazam or lumetrizin. Similarly, patient diagnosis partial seizures, first choice will be coming in carbamazepin or valproate or you can have an alternative drug like phenytoin, lumetrizin, vigapetrin, topiramazepin. So, you have you know number of choice are available in this uh, first choice and second choice. So, depending on you know looking at the cost factors, of course, definitely you are going for this as per the standard treatment guideline. Similarly, in status epilepticus, we have that first choice is digipam. We give IV or in case of a pediatric also, you can use lorazepam and earlier it used to be used a phenobarbitan. So, these are drugs are available in the treatment of different type of epilepsy. Now, similarly, if you look at again looking at that we have a generalized tonic clonic seizure and another part we have a partial seizure. Now, if you look generalized tonic clonic seizure in case of absent seizure, so what option we have is a single drug is etosuximide. Now, if you look at that partial onset of seizure like we have restricted anti epileptic drug or with secondary tonic clonic, we have several drugs you can use start from carbamazepine, phenytoin, vigabetrin, gabapentin, digabetrin, oxacarbazepin. Now, another group of drug if you see that broad spectrum anti epileptic drug which is applicable that it is useful in all type of seizure. You can start with valproic acid, lamotrigine, topiramide, levacitramide, zonisamide, phenobarbitan and benzodiazepine. Of course, if you look at the clinical use, nowadays phenobarbitan it has a wide safety margin, it is now reduced including zonisamide. So, we have wide variety, so you can select the drug and see that how the patient is going to respond in that case. Now, look at it individually, as I said that we prefer to use the older anti epileptic, like we can give an example of phenytoin, carbamazepine, phenobarbitan, sodium valproate. So, if you look at the phenytoin, it is the dose you started is always use the minimum dose, lower dose, then you escalate the dose and at the same time you have to also look at that how the patient is responding. So, you look at TDM also therapeutic drug monitoring, how much dose has been given, how much that you know is it within a therapeutic range or not, because these are the drugs we have to be very, very careful because it is a narrow therapeutic index drug. So, you start from 150 milligram to 600 milligram daily. Of course, we have to look for therapeutic window. So, therapeutic margin is 10 to 20 microgram per ml. So, normally you get a T max is around 12 hours. So, as I said earlier that this phenytoin is indicated in all kind of seizure except absent seizure. Now, as I said that it is used chronically, you have to be very careful. Like I said about strategies for treatment of anti epileptic that one thing is you select the drug but at the same time you have to look for a compliance also and how you are going to minimize the adverse effect. So, normally when you start with phenytoin, we have several adverse effect is dizziness, nausea, skin rashes, pseudo lymphoma like there is an enlargement of lymph node, then gum hyperplasia. So, there are, there are several, of course, when you use chronically you have to be very careful because there are chances of having an osteomalacia or folate deficiency. So, that you need to be careful of when you use the phenytoin. Now, as you know that this particular drug is a zero order kinetic drugs. So, small increase of dose can increase a large increase of level. As I said that upper limit of therapeutic drug monitoring of this level is 20 microgram per ml. So, you have to see that when you start with a lower dose, how much within the therapeutic range or not, at the same time what about ADR profile. Okay. So, this TDM is mandatory for that. And at the same time, this drug is metabolized by a cytochrome P450, 2C9 and 19. So, you have to also see that when you use concomitant medication, is it actually enhancing the level because these are enzyme inducers. So, that is what you need to be taking care of of phenytoin. So, as I said, uh, another anti-epileptic drug is older one is carbamazepine. Now, the main principle is you use the dose which is lower dose, look at the therapeutic drug monitoring how much dose has been achieved, level is in achieved because these are narrow therapeutic drugs. So, usually you keep it around 4 to 10 microgram per ml. 
Now, in case of the children, you have to be very careful because there is a poor correlation of kinetic and dynamic. So, that is you have to go regular TDM and then only you will escalate the dose. This drug is widely distributed in tissue found in placenta. So, one has to be careful because it is also escalated in breast milk. So, during the lactation you have to be careful and this carbamazepine is used in all type of scissor except absent scissor and myoclonic scissor. So, as I said that it is chronically used, one has to be very careful about common side effect. It is headache, drowsiness, dizziness, ataxia, double vision, especially in case of a school going children, you have to see that whether it is interfering with cognition or not. But one has to be very careful in case of a serious side effect. One is in children, you, it is a growing age. So, we have to look at is there any osteomalacia, folate deficiency or peripheral neuropathy and water retention is common problem of hyponatremia. May, there may be skin rash or blood dyscasia or specially leukopenia. So, as this drug is uh, used for partial scissors, primary and secondary generalized tonic-clonic scissors. So, it is, it is has, these are the enzyme inducer. So, one has to be careful when you use a concomitant therapy and it is, it has also active metabolite. So, there could be many drug interaction with carbamazepine. It is mostly metabolized by cytochrome 3A4. So, one has to be careful about carbamazepine. Now, another drug which is used is oxacarbazepine. It is most commonly used and the dose started is 600 to, you can go up to 2400 milligram daily looking at the TDM. So, you go for, you know, therapeutic plasma concentration before you escalate the dose and it is used for partial scissor with secondary generalized tonic clonic scissor and most common, you know, compared to carbamazepine, it has a less ADR profile when you compare with carbamazepine. So, there could be few drug interaction compared to carbamazepine. Another drug it is used is clobaz, clos, uh, clonazepam. Now, if you see clonazepam, it is used and most ADR profile is sedation and there could be ataxia and there is also change of behavioral problem and there could be hyperactivity also. So, it is used in partial seizures, half life is 18 to 50 hours and person can also develop tolerance. So, one has to be careful when subsequent visit that whether this drug is having tolerance or not because tolerance develop in 30 percent of the patient. So, dose use is start from 4 to 8 milligram per day and it has to be within therapeutic range 0 0.63 to 2.2 micromole per liters and it is basically it is been selected for the drug in case of a refractory or absence or myoclonic scissor. So, this drug is specially used for refractory absence or myoclonic scissor. Now, this dose can be started at 20 to 60 milligram clobazam and it is indicated for refractory epilepsy or if somebody is diagnosed as cluster seizure or seizure, if the seizure is connected to the period. So, most common side effects are there. So, it is compared to you know, you look at the carbamazepine and also it can be managed. Now, this is one of the important drug as I said that this is the only drug it is used for absent seizures. So, etosuximide it use starting from 500 milligram to 1500 milligram and it has to be kept in a therapeutic range 50 to 100 micrograms. So, you have to do that TDM therapeutic drug monitoring and only indication it is etosuximide is simple absent seizure. So, common side effect you can see that you can note that gastrointestinal upset. So, maybe you start with a lower dose see whether person can tolerate or not. So, this GI problem is with nausea and drowsiness or headache or there could be behavioral changes or sometimes it also reported with hiccup and skin rashes. So, it has a half life of almost you know 60 hours in adult and 40 hours in children. So, administered to reduce the gastric upset. So, one has to be careful about gastric upset with this etosexamine. Another important drug is gabapentin, which is start from 300 milligram to 2400 milligram. Of course, nowadays gabapentin is also used for other indication like neuropathic pain. And here TDM is not required because correlation of kinetic and dynamic effect is like level of the plasma and dynamic is not established. So, basically this drug has been used in case of as an adjunct therapy for refractory partial seizure. As I said that 
you have to use a single drug initially and if it is not responding then you use a two drug or still not responding you use a three drug. So, monotherapy, dual therapy, triple therapy, I will discuss later with the earlier slide. Now, gabapentin has a common side effect like drowsiness, dizziness, fatigue, ataxia, tremor or diplopia or nausea and vomiting. These are the common one because this drug is also excreted unsense in urine, only 60 percent dose is absorbed and it is do not have a drug like food, drug and food interaction and there could be seizure in increased frequency and there is no common drug interaction with this. Comparatively, it is also safe in case of overdose, but one has to be kept the minimum appropriate dose only. Now, another drug is used is lomotriazine. So, this drug is used in a dose of 100 to 200 milligram monotherapy with the pelproid. And in case of you know enzyme inducer, you reduce to 200 to 400 milligram with enzyme inducer. Now, you can also go with uh, therapeutic drug monitoring, but it is not clinically relevant and this drug is used as add-on therapy in all form of seizures. So, common side effect if you see the lomotrizin, it has typically dizziness, ataxia, double vision, nausea, somnolence and skin rashes and complex interaction with valproic. So, one has to be very careful that when you use another anti-epileptic with lomotrizin, especially sodium valproic. So, it has a drug drug interaction and this drug is used for partial seizure and secondary generalized tonic clonic seizure and it has a long half life of 25 hours. Now, one has to be careful that this lomotrazine also excreted in milk, breast milk. So, during the lactation period one has to be careful and it is you know reasonably safe in case of overdose with lomotrazine. Now, another drug it is used is levitiracetam which is used in a dose of 500 to 3000 milligram and TDM is though it is do not correlate, but one can go for a TDM and see that how the drug is responding with the dose. Now, this drug is used for partial seizure and generalized seizure also. Most common side effect with this drug is nausea, drowsiness, anorexia, headache, rash and sometimes rarely it can cause leukopenia. So, one has to be routinely go for a complete hemogram also. So, drug interaction is not been most important. Now, most of the older anti epileptic if you see that as I said phenytoin, carbamazepine, sodium valproate, one of this most commonly used anti epileptic have a better safety margin is phenobarbital. Of course, nowadays it is less used. Now, this phenobarbital dose is 90 milligram to 600 milligram daily and usually go for a TDM therapeutic drug monitoring is 20 to 40 micron. It has a wide margin of varieties. Now, this drug is almost used in all the seizures except Epsom scissors. Now, look at the common side of phenobarbital. As I said that it has a wide margin of safety margin. One of the commonest adverse effect take place is sedation because this try, try to develop the tolerance. Also, some people is reported with headache or hyperkinesia, especially in old person, maybe sometimes young person also they develop hyperkinesia and also it affect the speech and skin reaction. And there is also report that it and also can cause cognitive impairment. So, especially you like to use some of the anti epileptic in school going age, you try to avoid that. So, if you see dependency need very, very slow and withdrawal and interaction is it is increased with when you use concomitant valproic acid because it is also enzyme inducers and reduce the effect of many other drug. And Phenobarbitone especially it has a half life is 2 to 7 days, it is a very long half life and also one has to be very careful that this drug causes folate deficiency. So, there should be supplementation of this folate also along with this drug. Now, another important drug is primidone which is used dose of 50 milligram to 1500 milligram and of course, there is no need of doing a TDM and it is indicated on all the seizures except absent seizures. Now, common side effect you can compare with phenobarbitone, whatever I said the sedation, hyperkinesia. So, these are the common side effect with primidone also and it is metabolized to phenobarbitone this drug and that is what that similar pharmacokinetic and dynamic effect we will get it with phenobarbitone. Now, one of the older drug which is used typically in uh, epilepsy clinic is sodium valproate or valproic acid. Now, this drug is dose is 600 to 2400 milligram and of course, it required a TDM because 
it is have to be within therapeutic range of 50 to 100 microgram per mm. Now, uh, this is used in almost all this seizure or epilepsy. So, this is commonly used drug and it has a common side effect nausea, basically it causes GIT disturbances including drowsiness, ataxia and at the same time patient also gain weight over a period of time and typically it can also causes alopecia. Now, uh, sometimes it a rare side effect could be liver function dysfunction and also the thrombocytopenia. Now, typically it has a very long half life 10 to 20 hours uh, with particularly polytherapy. So, GI upset may reduce the now people have enteric coated also and this drug sodium valproic acid is interact with phenobarbitin and lamotrigine. So, one has to be careful when you use concomitant use of this drug. Another drug newer anti epileptic is belong to tigabentin. It is used dose of 30 to 45 milligrams and uh, it is an enzyme inducer. So, in case of that 15 to 30 milligrams should be used. Of course, TDM is not clinically relevant and basically this drug is used as an adjunct treatment for refractory partial therapy. So, we have couple of drug which is used in a refractory partial seizure and this has a common side effect like any other anti epileptic like, but another one is it can cause diarrhea, dizziness or tiredness or there could be cognitive because this drug typically patient reported that there is a concentration difficulties or there could be behavioral changes, emotional changes and also it affect the speech. It has a very short half life, basically this drug is used as add on therapy and efficacy is reduced because of another concomitant anti epileptic drug if it is an enzyme inducer. So, one has to be careful in case of a concomitant medication. Another one is topiramide, it is used in a dose of 200 to 800 milligram and you do not require a TDM for this because it is not clinically relevant, especially also it is adjunct therapy in case of refractory partial seizure and similar adverse effect has been reported like nausea, abdominal pain, anorexia or there could be cognition impairment or mood changes with this drug. So, one has to be careful in case of children with school going age. Now, though some of the drug causes increased weight, this particular drug topiramide has been reported that it causes weight loss and it might also cause in some patient depressive psychosis. So, during the review that once they come for a follow up, one has to be careful. At the same time, you have to also advise the patient that when you start with topiramate, they have to have adequate hydration and also increase risks because there is a risk of kidney stone with this drug and in order to avoid carbonic anhydrase, you know, inhibitors, people also start with acetazolamide. So, one has to advise that patient should take adequate water with when you start with this drug and half life is long half life 80 to 30 hours and one has to be also look at that what are the concomitant medication you have used with this drug. Another drug we use is Vigabetrin. The dose is 2000 to 3000 milligram and you do not require a TDM for that because it is not clinically relevant and especially this drug is used for adjunct therapy and refractory generalized tonic clonic partial seizure. So, similar side effect you get, but only thing is that it is irreversible inhibitor of GABA tensor minus and it has a very short half life with vigabentin. Though this zonisamide is nowadays not commonly used, it is one of the drug which is preferred earlier is 100 milligram per day and every two weeks maximum dose you can use is 400 milligram. So, this is also an enzyme inducers and peak plasma concentration you get within 2 to 6 hours. And this is also have an interaction with food, it is affected by food and steady test you get it within 14 days. So, this is indicated for partial seizure, though we have to be very careful when you use this drug because it is causes hypersensitivity. So, those patient have a history of allergy, one has to be careful. So, we need to be also careful about it can causes renal stone or renal impairment. So, when you start the drug, you have to see that kidney function test because it also causes kidney stone and it should be avoided in pregnancy because it is considered to be a teratogenic. So, it has lot of common side effect like agitation, confusion, dizziness like any other anti epileptic drug, somnolence, double visions 
and common side effect like diarrhea, nausea. So, one has to be careful for them. But at the same time, as I said that it is should not be used in pregnancy because it is teratogenic or one has to be very careful about kidney stone or hypersensitivity. So, another one is blood dyscrasia or there is a report that it causes pancreatitis, hallucination, psychosis. So, this drug it is not preferably used now, but one has to be monitoring the patient while starting the therapy. So, altogether if you see that we have established older anti epileptics, we have so many new anti epileptics which is used as you know refractory epilepsy as an add on therapy. Now, if you take a simultaneously clinical situation that you have a patient with two more spontaneous seizure and that seizure is focal onset of seizure. So, what you can give is first line anti epileptic therapy is carbamazepine or you can have an alternative one is lomotriazine or you can have phenytoin, topidamide, valproic acid. Now, suppose if you have a generalized tonic clonic seizure or suppose hypothetically there is a pregnant lady child bearing years. So, first line anti epileptic you started lomotriazine or you can have topidamide or valproic acid of course, some report that this valproic acid can also cause autism. Another unclassified seizure you can have not a woman bearing you know first line therapy you can start with valproic acid or alternative you can have lamotrazine on topidamide. So, you have to look classify that what kind of seizure it is, what is the first choice and what is the alternative one because you have to look at the individualized therapy for anti epileptic drug. Now, some people are there who are not responding to a single therapy. Now, normally when you look at that epilepsy clinic 70 percent of the patient they are responding to single treatment. You start with older anti epileptic, but some are almost 30 percent you have to use that dual anti epileptic drug, some you have to start with third anti epileptic drug, triple anti epileptic drug around 6 to 7 percent. Now, still then if you see some people are refractory. Now, if you can identify a particular area where there is a excessive you know discharge, people also go for surgical treatment. So, it is in surgical treatment it is ability to identify focus of the seizure. Of course, it is been done in the rare cases, but there are huge number of leads for surgical you know treatment also. Another treatment mode is non pharmacological is Vegas NAS stimulator. This is also been done in if there is a refractory case of epilepsy. Some people also have ketogenic diet and it has been reported that ketogenic diet can be controlled the seizure. So, there are non pharmacological treatment in case of a rare where it is not responding or refractory seizure. Now, altogether if you see that we have a huge number of drugs, older anti epileptics, newer anti epileptics, but what is the principle of pharmacological treatment? As I said that use of right drug for particular seizure, you identify diagnose it should be proper. Use one drug then increase the dose because you do repeated therapeutic drug monitoring and we look at individual basis that whether it is suitable for that person or not. And at the same time I said three thing is that you select the drug, look at that ADR profile and also compliance one. So, you look at the toxicity whether it is appear because at the same time you have to understand that these are the drug with narrow therapeutic index. So, you have to monitor the blood level and if required if it is not responding a single treatment you have to add the second drug. So, you start from monotherapy to dual therapy to triple therapy or if it is required a newer anti epileptic drug is third drug is required. So, you have to prepare and accept a significant reduction of seizure frequency because main goal of the treatment is you have that there should not be any seizure and all the at the same time you have to also look at the quality of life of the patient. Now, as I said repeatedly that compliance is very very important. You select the right drug effective which is effective but if there is a non compliance. So, you have to educate the patient also. Otherwise, you will never get to know that patient is not taking the medicine and there is a poor control. Of course, you will go for a therapeutic drug monitoring where you get to know that what is the label, how much dose is used, you can establish you know correlation and patient must be fully involved with decision because you have to respect also patient view and you have to motivate. So, that your therapy is more successful with a better compliance. Thank you very much.